Last video, we looked at the journey of Anset and the incredible business mind of Reginald Anset. We learned about how quickly it grew and about how Reginald Anset's vision came to be as it expanded and overtook other airlines and overtook the cargo business, overtook the Australian domestic travel landscape. And then came the death of Reginald Anset and the landscape for Anset as an airline began to change and everything started to shift. If you haven't watched part one, I suggest doing it now because it gives you a great deal of context into Anset as an airline before we now turn to the demise of the incredible airline. Okay, with no time to waste, click subscribe and let's get started. It's September 2001 and Air New Zealand has a huge stake in ANSET Airlines. On the 12th of September 2001, Acting Chairman of Air New Zealand, Dr. Jim Farmer, announced that ANSET Holdings and a number of its subsidiary businesses, including airlines, have resolved into voluntary administration. Three gentlemen from PricewaterhouseCoopers, yes, PwC, the PwC, are appointed as administrators to take control of ANSET. Just two days later, on the 14th of September, one of these gentlemen, Peter Hedge, announces the suspension of all flight operations for ANSET Australia and all of its subsidiary airlines. ANSET is in panic mode, and so is the government. This is a huge airline that has a large stake in the domestic market, and its only realistic competitor is Qantas. So a day later, the government announces a $10 ticket levy to cover the costs of supporting ANSET workers' entitlements. They're going to put $10 on top of every ticket price that a customer pays to ensure that the workers are still being paid their fair wage. Then on the 18th, less than a week from the initial announcement of administration, we gain a true understanding of just how insane the scale of this administration is. Because Peter Hedge and the other two gentlemen from PwC step down. Already, the job is too much. Mark Corder and Mark Mentha of Anderson are appointed as administrators of the ANSET group of companies. Now remember these two marks in the back of your brain because they feature quite heavily throughout the administration period and also they nearly revive ANSET but to no avail. You'll see as we keep going. Within two days of being appointed, the two marks have already assessed which parts of ANSET's business are still profitable and they've reopened them for business. Aeropelican restarts, subsidiary Sky West restarts, and 100 employees from the International Ground Handling Wing of ANSET and 230 ANSET cargo employees return to work because these are the only parts of the business that are still profitable. And now we near the end of September, the very first month of administration, and the two marks have managed to secure a cash injection of $3.5 million from the federal government to allow Kendall to resume services from September 27th. And on the 27th, in the wake of securing a federal government guarantee, ANSET also has five A320s commence services back into operations and 1,500 ANSET employees return to work. So things are starting to look, you know, okay. The two marks are doing a great job. It's now the 1st of October and things are in full swing. They're looking up. ANSET Mark II is the phrase that is floating around everywhere. Less than a week after resumption of flights, ANSET's major trunk route bookings exceed 25,000 people. The Australian public is flocking to support ANSET in this time of need, to start travelling with them more and more to try and push that revenue up and get them up above the water so they're no longer sinking. So now the two marks know that they have to talk with Air New Zealand to secure a deal to allow them to take ANSET's assets off of their hands. So the two marks go to federal court to seek a $150 million settlement with Air New Zealand. But a week before this happens, they meet with Singapore Airlines to discuss the possibility of their involvement in a reconstituted ANSET Mark II. So comes the 16th and the two marks are playing all angles. They are determined to get ANSET back up and running so the Australian people can hold on to the airline that they consider to be beloved. So now comes the 12th of October, they're in federal court. Justice Alan Goldberg approves a $150 million settlement with Air New Zealand. Things are starting to boom again. Each and every step taken by the two marks culminate on the 8th of November when ANSET finds a buyer. Solomon Liu and Lindsay Fox and their consortium as Tesna Holdings agree to buy all of ANSET's assets valued at $3.6 billion dollars in a landmark deal. Now, sidebar here, because 
leading up to the purchase of the reinvigorated handset, our lovely friends over at a little airline called Virgin Blue had been bidding to take over and utilize the now empty and unused terminal space at a variety of different airports across the East Coast to make the most of Ansett's demise. And they would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for that pesky little deal made on the 8th of November when Ansett was sold because suddenly the two marks which were initially interested in Virgin Blue's offer turned around and said, well, sorry, too little, too late. Unfortunately, Ansett's been sold. So these new owners, they're going to need that space because Ansett's coming back, baby. So now we reach December and previously an offer for redundancy had been sent out to employees. They could take up on Mark and Mark's offer of a redundancy package just to shed some fat off of the airline before it comes back in droves. And as seems to be the universal trend, everything calms down over Christmas. There are redundancy packages paid out. There's annual leave granted, all paid by the new owners. And then it comes to February 2002, on the 11th of February, when it is speculated that Lindsay Fox and Solomon Lou are traveling to the UK to meet with Sir Richard Branson of Virgin. But as it turns out, what they were actually doing is buying 30 new planes from Airbus in a $3 billion deal. Amid reports that the scaled down ANSET is losing millions of dollars a week. And the truth of it is, this is where Solomon Liu and Lindsay Fox see ANSET's incredible bleed of money for what it truly is. Because this isn't as simple as a case of an airline that got too big or even an airline that lost its visionary when Reginald Ansett died. What is happening with Ansett is that every aircraft that they own is old and dying and not held to the same levels of maintenance as other airlines. And Ansett don't have as new a fleet as other airlines in Australia. And they have old 767s, old Airbus A320s, all of which break down constantly and have to have Australian licensed maintenance engineers working on them day and night. Flying spanners are having to fly on regular domestic routes because the truth is all of Ansett's aircraft were crap. Absolute pieces of crap. Look, let's do a quick comparison between Ansett and Qantas in the year 2002. Ansett was running with a aging fleet of A320 and 767 aircraft and also BA146s. Let's also throw them into the mix. While Qantas had a sparkling fleet of 747 wide body aircraft and they had taken delivery of a number of brand new 737s. They were starting to be rolled out at that point. So we're talking about a fresh young fleet versus an aging, lagging fleet draining money through maintenance costs alone. At one point, it was rumored during the administration period that Ansett was losing $1 million a day in costs related to aircraft maintenance and staff pay issues. And it's rather timely that we should talk about these losses during the time of February 2002 because on the 26th of February, it is announced that the finalization of all arrangements necessary for the completion of sale agreement between Tesna, Lindsay Fox and Solomon Liu and Ansett administrators cannot be achieved by the 28th of February, which was the deadline and the sale process involving Tesna and the administrators was ceased. It's almost as if Solomon Liu and Lindsay Fox got a look underneath the armor and saw how many chinks were there and decided that they did not want a part of it. And so suddenly, before it was back off the ground and on its feet again, on the 4th of March, after 66 years, of flying passengers in Australia, ANSET ceases all flying operations. But we can't understate the value that the two marks represented in administrating the fall of ANSET because over the coming months, 
They ensure that some of the subsidiary airlines like Kendall and Aero Pelican continue operating despite the crash because they're profitable and they're able to keep them on their feet. They collaborate closely with a job search website to set up a specific portal for all ANSET workers to get their name out there and find other jobs within the Australian aviation industry, which is a hugely notable thing because so many former ANSET employees still work in the Australian industry throughout the country at different areas in different ports doing different things that they learnt at ANSET at the very beginning. ANSET announces the sale of ANSET Group subsidiary airline Aero Pelican and Kendall on the 26th of April and those airlines fly their own flag. On the 10th of April, ANSET's head office building in Swanston Street in Melbourne goes under the hammer and then in may virgin blue get their wish they get the spaces that they requested initially off of anset and also the domestic terminal that was ansets in sydney is sold as well and so over the coming 18 months all of ansets assets are sold off and remarketed the majority of ANSET's aircraft are appointed to Cabo Aviation or Pembroke Capital for remarketing. The very same 767-200 aircraft and A320 aircraft that were the entire reason behind a huge bleed in costs in the initial phase of voluntary administration are now being sold to new owners. And we cannot understate the incredible push that all employees of ANSET Airlines made to getting their fair entitlement off of the administrators and of the remaining liquid pool that ANSET held onto because they took them all the way to the Supreme Court over superannuation and the A320 Pilots Association also took ANSET to court and had a training claim settlement approved by the federal court. And now we jump to 2004, which is a full three years since the initial voluntary administration announcement by Air New Zealand. And we see the sale of ANSET's Flight Simulation Centre sold to Aviation Training Australasia Proprietary Limited. Now, this is an important one, and this is, I bring up this point because this is actually one of the only remaining remnants of ANSET that you can still see today. This ANSET Training Centre is still utilised. Those A320 simulators are still 24 hours, 7 days a week utilised for type rating trainings for recurrency trainings situational training all types of different simulator training that current airline pilots within australia of a320 operating airlines use so if this is your first exposure to the ins and outs of ANSET Australia watching these videos and you want to see a piece of the pie, you can actually head to Melbourne to Essendon and there is a training centre there that has a massive big ANSET Australia logo on the front of it and there's a big glass window that has a great view to the inside where there are A320 simulators being used around the clock. And then on the 31st of July 2008, a full seven years after the initial announcement of voluntary administration, the final aircraft of ANSET Australia leaves its hands for Europe and ANSET is no more. It's finished. It's done. BA-146 aircraft departs Australia and that is it. No more. Thousands of Australian dedicated employees who had formed a family as part of ANSET were left with nothing, left to find a new job for themselves, left fighting ANSET and the administrators, the two marks, for any penny that they can get their hands on to allow them to keep their livelihood afloat until they can find new work. And it's sad, but this didn't happen as a result of a lacklustre care on the part of Reginald Ansett. This came after. This whole airline's collapse happened because a visionary who took his airline 
to new heights and gained a true respect from the Australian public. He died, and when he died, his vision died with it. And the airline was sold off to large-scale corporations that tried to maintain the profitability of the aircraft through common business practices, things that you would expect corporations of that scale to do. And there are a few businesses out there that are like that. Walt Disney with Disney or Steve Jobs with Apple. People like that, that have incredible vision, that create insane products that leave a lasting legacy on the industry that's relevant to them are entirely the reason that the business is successful. The only difference is that an airline is harder to maintain if you don't have the appropriate vision. It's more than just operating a profitable business. It's being able to have the ruthless mindset of how am I going to make this airline something that people respect, people revere, something that dominates a landscape. And that is something that comes with a once and a generation mind. And that's what Reginald Ansett had. And ultimately, his death was the true beginning of the end for Ansett because no one could keep the airline on the same pedestal that he had put the airline on himself. Now, before I finish, I should mention, I know full well that some of you will say in the comments that there was a meeting in 2002 with Jeff Dixon and the federal government in which Qantas secured a long-term partnership with the federal government to essentially become Australia's flagship carrier and some say that that played a huge part in the downfall of ANSET because a guarantee that was provisionally put forward to the ANSET Mark II revival suddenly slipped through the palms of the two marks throughout their administration period but the truth is there's no hard evidence to suggest that the meeting between Jeff Dixon the then corner CEO and the federal government led to that agreement uh, being ripped up. Even though I'm sure we can all speculate there is a likelihood to it because suddenly Qantas became the new carrier of Australia, the new pride and joy as such. So I can understand if people jump to that conclusion, but no hard evidence on that one. Okay, well, look, that's it. Mark and Mark, Mark Cordell and Mark Mentha now actually have a firm in Melbourne CBD Caudal and Mentha, they sort of used their administration of Ansett Airlines to kickstart their careers as such. They used the incredible work that they did and nearly reviving the airline as a portfolio to then create their own firm in which they do a lot of work within the finance industry. Well done to the two marks. I'd love to talk to them one-on-one because I just feel like that there would be a wealth of knowledge when it comes to ANSET in 2001 and 2002 and, and going through all of that. So look, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of ANSET's downfall. And if you have any questions or you have anything to add to the discussion or the conversation, yeah, please leave a comment. I'd love to hear it. And I will talk to you in the next video. Thanks very much, guys. Bye. Am I with Ansett? Absolutely.